So here we have our 1969 Lotus Europa. Uh, a little bit of history on this car. It uh, basically was given to me as a project that multiple people tried to uh, attempt to finish but never ever could do anything with. So not something I would normally take on as I got this car in a box uh, completely apart. A lot of the parts were missing. Um, so I've decided to do a twist on this car and uh, we're not going to put the original motor back in one being as it is in the uh, poor shape um, and they're very hard to find parts for as it's a it's a Renault motor and um, not very many of them here in Canada especially because this car was imported so the twist is we are going to swap this vehicle or convert it with an electric motor. So the next question you got to ask yourself when you're doing up an electric car is where do I start? What do I pick? What motor do I use? What's the process? Well, there's a lot of different batteries out there that you can choose from. And what I ended up choosing was a Tesla Model S battery cell. Why? Because there's tons of them out there and everybody's already hacked these things and put their own circuit boards and replaced BMS boards that are built into the battery pack itself. Uh, so a lot of information out there. Um, they're very high quality batteries and you can source them from just about anywhere. So when we look at a Tesla cell, we got two things basically um, are fully charged voltage um, for the cell and our fully discharged voltage uh, we never drain a, a lithium ion battery cell down to zero that would never happen uh, because it becomes unstable so what they actually do is they operate on a range of uh, voltage so with that in mind, now we can kind of think about the next step as well. I've got a battery chosen and I've got the car. How many batteries can I fit in this car uh, reasonably because they are about 55 pounds a cell. Uh, this is a pretty small car and I want some form of a decent range. So I end up uh, doing six cells. So if I take this and times it by six, I get 144 volts. And if I take the discharged amount times by six, I get 118.8 volts. So that's my totally charged 144 volt, totally discharged 118 volts. So my voltage, my system voltage that I'm going to use on this car is going to be this guy right here, our highest voltage. So I'm going to have a 144 volt system. Now a standard Tesla car is 300 volts. So you can achieve that with 13 modules, right? So I've got just under half of what an actual Tesla S car came with. Um, they do vary uh, the other cars out there. Uh, I don't know exactly how many modules each one has, but this is uh, this is what I'm going to choose with this car. So we've chose our battery system on this car. We're going to be 144 volts. Now we need to choose the next items and that would be a motor onboard charger and any other electrical device that's going to operate on the high voltage. Uh, this particular project, I cannot use a Tesla motor because they operate at a higher voltage. Um, and I cannot achieve that with the space and batteries that I am using. Obviously there are smaller, denser batteries which are, that have higher voltage. I did not choose anything like that. Um, so we are sticking with the Tesla Model S batteries. That being said, we now need to pair up a motor 
with those batteries and this process now makes it a little bit easier because now I need to look for a motor that's a 144 volt system and then obviously the motor will have a range of voltage in which it can operate so I'm assuming I'd have find one that goes as high as 144 volts and as low as 118 volts um, the next item would be what they call an onboard charger which is this guy here and this is what will charge my battery system uh, from my a wall charger or AC current obviously that item has to have the same voltage range um, you'll see that this voltage range is common out there for a lot of projects uh, just due to the uh, serviceability of it and uh, battery module setups so uh, keeping that in mind all your other systems have to match your high voltage system. You can't have an AC system that operates at 300 volts when you only have a 144 volt system, it's not gonna work. Um, so you have to keep that in mind once you've chosen your battery and, ch and picked out what motor and voltage you wanna run with. Tesla Model S. Uh, battery modules. Uh, there is four of them back here. Uh, one on top of another uh, and then a side by side like that. Uh, that's all I had for room in the back of this compartment on the Lotus. So that uh, is the setup back here. While I am here I'll show you the onboard charger. That's going to take our wall outlet charging that guy and convert AC to DC in order to charge the batteries. We have our motor inverter that's going to take our battery voltage or DC voltage and convert it to AC and, and, and make it a three phase system to control the electric motor. And then what we have over here is the battery maintenance module or BMS. That guy there is a vital component for our battery systems. Uh, and the reason why, if we go back to our chart here, we see that you have a range of voltage in which those batteries have to stay at. You don't want to go below 118 volts. And you don't want to go above 144 volts. So that range that you see right there that's what that battery is capable of. You go outside that range and you run into uh, cells uh, breaking or rupturing and they become unstable. So the, the BMS system here is going to monitor each cell group in the batteries and determine whether the voltage is too high or too low and it is basically the, the backbone for everything. If the BMS says no more voltage can come out, it will open up my contactors and, and not allow the motor to draw any more voltage uh, and discharge the battery completely to zero. So that guy is going to protect our battery. In the same regards, this guy here is going to charge our battery and it will no, it will not go above 144 volts um, as a s added safety precaution this BMS also has control of the charger and in fact if that guy locks up for some reason and keeps charging my BMS will shut off the charger now there's a number of ways this can be done um, I'll explain that a little bit further Now if we go back to our Tesla battery cell, uh, you're probably wondering, well how the heck can we monitor each battery cell or battery module when charging and discharging? And, and this is how uh, Tesla does it originally. Uh, they have their battery module, which I just showed you, and it's broke down into six cell blocks. 
in that battery. So they, they monitor the voltage of a block within that module and bolted to the front of the battery is what they call BMS board, uh, battery maintenance system board. This little board will determine whether or not this battery can be charged and discharged uh, or maintaining the balance of each cells within the battery itself. So one of the first things you do is take off that board uh, because it's got a complex circuit that uh, is used in the Tesla system. Now, there are different BMS systems that would work with OEM Tesla BMS boards, but in my case, I got rid of it and installed a uh, just a generic brand or company board that breaks it down into the uh, cell taps, six of them basically. So that board will fit right onto the battery and then allow me to wire my connections uh, to my battery maintenance system. So when you look at it, each wire would go to a cell group and monitor each cell block, 3.3 volts discharged, 4.1 volts charged. So each cell block it can monitor and then that would give us our total voltage for one module.